Good morning. Welcome to this keynote session of Event World Talks. We're with the very lovely Max Fellows. How are you doing, Max? Very well, thank you, and a pleasure to be here. Fabulous. Fabulous. Slightly, slightly yes. nerve-wracking at the same time. Really? Well, yes and no. I, was, I mentioned on my LinkedIn post of, of I actually made a conscious decision that, that I would be completely open and kind of let down this... I don't know, peripheral uh, wall or this kind of armour of, 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 I don't know, just protection. People have a protective layer, don't they? Or this this persona they try to get out there. And actually, you know what? You know me well enough anyway that I am who I am and I tend to be, you know, myself and for the good and the bad. But I still think there's that kind of inner layer of, of not secrets, just you keep things to yourself, don't you? You do, don't you? It's, it's the mask we refer to it, isn't it? The mask that we wear kind of serve where we, we put out the persona out there and then sometimes we just put out the persona that we think people want to see rather than, yeah. you know, that authentic, real, that ability to be able to show that vulnerability, isn't it? It's as, as we are as, as human beings and not robots and machines kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think that that's it, isn't it? It can be incredibly difficult when you're in a senior position, management position, leadership position, even more so, it, it feels more like you need to kind of hide that stuff. So don't worry, you, you're always, in very safe hands today, Max. It's always, well, I, I, I knew that coming on to this, I knew that. But you mentioned the, the vulnerability part, and I think it's exactly that. I think in leadership roles, and without getting into it too deep before we actually get into it, but it, it, it's very controlled all the time. And there's a, a real sense of a tap that you can turn on and off and you know exactly how much you're letting out to who because of the vulnerability aspect. You don't want to look weak. You don't want to look vulnerable to peers, to your team. So there's always that, that tap. You can't actually then often just let it all out, but hopefully we're going to try and get people to believe that actually that's okay and it is more humanizing and actually endearing to an extent when people can so yeah absolutely that whole it's okay to not be okay exactly so we're going to be asking max some questions for the next half an hour um, and we'll do some q a so you guys will have an opportunity to ask max um your questions as well so start putting those in the q a for us during the session and um, when it gets to the half past 10, I'll, I'll start going through the questions with everybody. Um, but I suppose just to kick off the session, really, I mean, it's been a very, very difficult year, I would say, particularly from a, from a business ownership, CEO leadership position, hasn't it? Everything that we've, we've all had to face over the last 12 months, facing a pandemic, having our industry effectively closed down. And it, it's still, we still haven't got the go ahead really to be having our dog to, to be holding face to face at least in live events, which is the pure heart and blood of what our industry does, isn't it? Um, but it's, you know, we've got, we also have to face a very, very real um, situation that there's a mental health emergency emerging as well. Um, and there's a lot of people struggling and managers and, you know, leaders, and not immune to that, especially the trauma that a lot of people in our industry have faced, such as losing businesses, having to close down their babies, their, 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 their careers, having to make people redundant, losing people that they've had relationships with for a long time, worked with for a long time. So it, it's tough on the managers as well. So I suppose I wanted to to ask you first kind of max is your personal experience of the last 12 months what has that what has that looked like for you so personal experience i've i've almost done a bit of of everything to to, to what you just mentioned there so it was part of a business where it was in the leadership team where we were running the business and and had a team uh, of uh, double figures i also then through running elevate and things was i suppose my, my position in the industry, it, it, it tends to be one that I've got an incredible network and I'm super lucky to have have that. And, and I make sure that I keep in touch with people, but by doing so, and because of Elevate, it meant that I was in this really interesting position where I was speaking to a lot of agency owners or a lot of a lot of people of, of senior leadership positioning and almost not an agony arm because that that that's not the right terminology, but it was very much, I suppose, a sounding board and, and just someone to listen to. And, you know, it was two or three calls a day that we were having chats with people, uh, chats with agency owners of senior leadership um, about what was going on. So I went through the, the situation where having to look at overheads and look at the team um, 
in terms of reducing overheads and, and potential redundancies. I myself then was part of that as an extended redundancy. So then actually, you know, as well as then looking after the team from a mental health and well-being perspective, as well as then a financial perspective for the business growth and, and the future of, is that actually then was, was part of that. And so going through that yourself, uh, and then um, had some time to think, which is actually not a bad thing to do. And I urge everyone to kind of utilize it. There's a real pressure when you're either on furlough or in lockdown is to use that time wisely. And that in itself, I'll tell you a bit about kind of just before the, the last 12 months, but I actually had a couple of months the year before where I took time out after having um, an incident of sorts, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, and the pressure that there is on people to upskill, learn, learn a new skill, read 10 books to, to come out of this a better person, when in actual fact, it's just kind of coming out of it full stop. And then you add on the fact of homeschooling and things like that, I think it's immense. So I unfortunately don't have kids just yet, but, but on the way, but you know, it was very much kind of looking after a team going through that redundancy process with the team and then also being part of that, uh, and then starting up a business and, and then, you know, starting up a second business and kind of then driving it forward and, and hopefully coming, coming out of it better. But the, there's a huge wave of emotions that you go through and experiences dur during that period. It's, no one has ever had practice at this and i think that's something that that whilst people are there i say dictating but sharing what they think is the best thing they don't know no one has been through this before and i think it's really wise to to remember that this it you know we say it's okay to not be okay but it's also okay not to know exactly what you're doing one minute to the next or have moments where why what do i do what, what should i be doing and things and and i, I you know I've, I've experienced all aspects of that i suppose over the last 12 months yeah, and that's a really important message that you've put out there as well. There can be too much, can't there, of, of people expecting you, and, and, and sorry for the words and stuff, but expecting you to have your shit together, if that makes mm. sense, mm. and expecting you to show up and be present and all that. Whereas, you know, sometimes it's all right. If you're not feeling it, if you've got a day where, do you know what, I can't do it today. I can't do it today. Do you know what, that's all right as well. And the amount of the, people expecting you to do courses and learn, yes. bake banana bread. That was one, wasn't it? You should be baking pizzas and making your own bread as well it, it, it just got a little bit too much for a lot of people didn't it especially when you're trying to exactly be put the nail on the head there as well I mean you're trying to juggle so much not just work but your personal life as well when you, so take you mentioned uh, I was just going to say when you take into consideration is that you're juggling personal life you're juggling bills or you're juggling every aspect that that you know for, for most people will be to the brink of of too much but then you throw in and you know and, and like I say homeschooling and things like that as well which is superhuman and i'm not going to lie superhuman of people to keep their shit together whilst also doing that or or even not keep their shit together whilst doing it, just getting through it but then you add on to the fact of almost having an extended set of children or extended and this isn't belittling anyone within a business but you have a team of five or ten you also then have to look after them and and, and, and categorically you are responsible for them so if someone is having a tough time as well, you need to be aware of that. You need to be on top of that. So there's pressure. And I suppose that's what it is. It's, it's pressure. Like I said, there isn't a manual as to how to do this. There isn't a how-to guide. And so a lot of people have had to really kind of find their way. And the pressure would be that, am I doing this right? The worry is that if I don't support my team, are they going to have a adverse effect to, to kind of lock down and, and it really hurt them and, and potentially damage them for, for a period of time going forward? So knowing that and having that pressure itself just compresses everything that you're feeling and it's just this vicious cycle yeah yeah absolutely and you mentioned elevate i wonder if you just want to talk through the the businesses and the things that you do in the industry and each one and then kind of how the last 12 months has impacted on those different areas mm, sure sure so elevate is the um, industry's uh, largest mentoring platform and, and program and we've actually just finished up applications now which are well, I suppose mind boggling. Uh, they're both amazing and also quite saddening at the same time. Uh, and so we've had over 170 applications now uh, from mentees who feel they need support, guidance and and help with career development. And so that to me is brilliant because in part there are a number of people who are stepping forward because they realise that during this period they've reflected, they want to progress their career, they want to work on personal attributes or, or skill sets and things, which is great. But there's also the vast majority that are actually coming here because confidence is still the number one issue bar 
bar none, over 80% struggle with confidence. So what's happened is because of this, uh, the impact of the pandemic is that so many people have just been shook. And so where they would have a foundation or their core, that's been dislodged and that's now fragile. So people would normally build up off the back of this that they're unsure necessarily of, of even if their career choice is right, even if the way they're doing things is right, whereas before that would at least be a, a, a more certain approach. So we've just seen this this abundance of people coming through. The first issue is is confidence bar none. The second is the kind of the skill set and the third of which now and, and the confidence um, links up very much with imposter syndrome. But the third of which now is this personal brand. And this is something that I've not seen before properly, but this has come through in swathes now of people being, I suppose, petrified that they don't have a personal brand and this additional pressure of it. And, and, and now people are really kind of worried that they're not in the spotlight or they're not being seen. And a lot of that is down to the fact they've not been in, in colleague environments where they're being seen by their colleagues because they're at home. You know, that, that celebration of a great pitch or that celebration of a great project and things happens over a message, but it isn't a beer after work or a pat on the back or a, a cuddle and a, a well done by the team. So this is also something that's coming through, you know, in, in swathes, which is just, yeah, mind blowing. But we have had an incredible uh, response from, from those in the industry mentoring. So we are now looking to potentially pair 170 pairings of mentees and mentors, uh, which we've never done before. It's over 300 people, um, which is going to just be incredible. And we're putting a real, real emphasis on community support, uh, creating subgroups of, of smaller WhatsApp groups to talk. And, and we're urging people to talk and, and it's okay to share. And you know, a lot of the lessons and a lot of the things that you, you very much talk about, we're trying to integrate and make sure that we're putting front and center for that. So that's very much kind of elevate. And then on the side of that now, so the, the day to day for me is a, is a consultant. So I work directly with brands, um, event managers, you know, event heads, as well as then on agencies in either, you know, tender agency procurement, so on, um, from a, from a, an agency side, it's very much working on business structure, the whole piece around overheads, but also then refining and renewing the value proposition, uh, a go to market plan, strategy, brand, culture, talent, retention process, load of those different things in there as to what I'm doing now on a day to day. Um, incredibly lucky to be able to do that with a number of brands. So that's the bills kind of then taken care of. Then thirdly is um, virtual events directory, which are created. Um, and that was very much a side hustle in the evenings. And, and it took a lot of work over a space of probably two and a half months of late evenings. But we got that to market and that's now kind of taking on a life of its own and it's growing from strength to strength with an impending US launch, which is, which is great. That's, yeah. that's the kind of the, 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 the period of time. And, and what I would say is that I myself have, you know, I'm severely dyslexic, um, you know, suffer from mild ADHD. And, and one of the things that happened off the back of, of this incident that I mentioned we'll talk about and things is that, that I also have a number of different characteristics now that I haven't had to deal with before. And so what's been interesting is trying to do this um, whilst now being mindful of, of I'm not going to say things that are holding you back, but there's definitely things that are making it harder. Now, whilst I'm excited more than ever, there's these attributes now that I've developed subconsciously as well, that are having to be taken care of and, and factor in as well. So it's been, a, it's been a really interesting kind of road and, and period of time for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you mentioned as well there, you mentioned the confidence, which, you know, for, for managers and leaders, we'd, we've we've had the confidence and the wind knocked out of our sails over the past 12 months as well, haven't they? I know yeah, my, yeah. myself, I've had to talk to a therapist in, in January. I had, to, I had to talk to, cause I was finding it so hard. And she actually mentioned compassion fatigue to me, which I'd never come across before. Mm. I never even mm. did it before. So just kind of looking at the, the elevate um, element there in terms of people coming to you for advice and, I don't know, direction, help, support, yeah. in whatever yeah. way that may be. You know, Reassur way to reassurance is probably yeah. the biggest one. Uh, and as I mentioned, during the first lockdown and things like that, I was able to to support, I suppose. And, and, and like I said, this, this network of people that I would speak to on a daily, weekly basis was really interesting because they so many were and are isolated. So there is this kind of siloed of impact where if you're at the top and, and we know how a business structure tends to be formatted, if you look at the people on your 
your band of seniority that is likely who you're going to speak to that's likely who your your peers and your your confidants are going to be and as you get higher there's less and less people you can talk to and and that's exactly how it is it's it's exactly that you, it's difficult to talk below because of the vulnerability aspect that we've got you also have an obligation to have your shit together to make sure that you're you're displaying a level of confidence to the team to give them confidence but the people you have on your level that you can honestly have a conversation with who might share the same concerns of things get smaller and smaller and smaller so as someone that that almost is is kind of unbiased to an extent and unaffiliated to an agency or otherwise is that i was able to to, to provide support and also don't get me wrong they acted very much as as, as people for me to have a, a conversation with but it was really interesting the band of and and one of the biggest things is is just do you know anything else so i can i can kind of develop a, a, a story, but I can help with the messaging for the team, or when do you think it's coming back? So, you know, can almost reassure them. But I think it's that kind of, yeah, it, it was really in interesting. Um, but that reassurance was a really, really big part, massive. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, we all need that reassurance, don't we? Mm. And that support as well. It's a lonely place at the top. They've always said that. And yeah. it is yeah. that, that pyramid effect, isn't it? As soon as you yeah. get to the top as you find yourself on your own yeah uh, you've mentioned as well um with the, the dyslexia and yeah. ocd that you've mentioned there incredibly brave for you to be open about that as well but you know that you're in a safe space here i mean so just for the, for the benefit of everybody knowing that you have those um how have you been how have you been looking after your own mental health and well-being what kind so of I, things have you had, had to do yeah so so the, just taking a step back so two years ago uh i and and i've been aware of mental health but nowhere near as i am now um and i was in a position of leadership and running an agency um an agency which had a very big hierarchy and structure and the pressure was on on you know undoubtable um as well as then having a number of different uh, i suppose dynamics within the business that were quite challenging as well so it, it, like i said that the kind of the pressure piece and things like that i'm also very i will go to war for any one of my team in fact most of my peers as well uh, and i'll i will do whatever i can so it means that that ends up taking on either more stress or, or more responsibilities and it was almost this kind of perfect storm where I have never recognized stress. And if I'm a little bit anxious or angsty, you'll notice my nose starts twitching. And it's actually a form of Tourette's that's developed off the back of stress. And it sounds so silly. Tourette's would be people talking shit and bugger and things like this. But it's actually now a nose twitch for me. I sniff and I twitch my nose. And it's a, it's a, a nervous thing that, that happens. And it's all from this compound effect of stress. So two years ago, uh, one of my best friends actually took his own life. Um, he's in his early 30s and things. And I was the last person he spoke to and was due to meet up with him the next day. And that had a massive effect. And whilst it wasn't a blame thing that I took responsibility for, so there was not a lot I could have done else. I mean, there'll always be a part of me that feels you can. But I felt I dealt with that. And what had happened, that had compounded another aspect of it. And that was the bit that fractured, uh, fractured the, the fundamentals of what I you know, always been quite strong and always been quite forthcoming and the first one to grab people by the collar, take them to the pub and understand what's going on with them. And I've never done that to myself, really. And, and, and it's a, a male thing as well, I suppose, is that you just don't. And what happened is um, nothing short of a nervous breakdown. I had a severe nervous breakdown and that resulted in a Thursday, a Wednesday evening event at the Hurlingham Club. Um, Someone stole my laptop bag um, and that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It displaced it, I'd lost it and I went into meltdown mode. And without knowing it, I then went um, took a taxi from Hurley and Club South East to where I lived in Walthamstow, which couldn't be further away. And I sat on my own for a bench crying for about five hours until about 4.30 in the morning. I wasn't even aware I was doing this. And then when I kind of realized where I was, I went back to Hurlingham Club in a taxi at great expense uh, to go hunting for this bag, couldn't find it. And then I went into this phase of round two of this, this breakdown, whereas it was just sheer panic and terror and not knowing what to do. And I'm always someone that can fix things or I know at least the direction. And for the first time in my entire life, I didn't know what to do to fix this and I didn't know where to turn and I just melted. And there's no other word for it. And I just, 
had a period of of time where I didn't know where to turn and I was literally just walking around almost in circles in the middle of in the middle of the street type of thing lost upset I was crying and things and just didn't know where to turn or, or who to speak to so I ended up being able to because I'd lost my wallet and everything and then ended up then being able to kind of get my way back home um and yeah and and try and process things. And I had a couple of friends I spoke to. Um, I then spoke to my sister, um, who, who then, she's never heard me speak like that before. And she got terrified to so came up and things. So I, I quite quickly, well, after about a day, surrounded myself with a safety blanket, I suppose, and then started to try and rebuild or, or at least identify what had happened and then rebuild. And this was, it was like this compound effect. And, I, and I'm, I'm mentioning this, not as a sob story, but as a, as a, I suppose, a warning as someone that has done public speaking, I present quite a bit in things, you know, I, I turn anxiety into excitement, but there's a difference from being then stressed and knowing when it's unhealthy. And I didn't ever recognize this. I didn't know that feeling. I now know what that feeling is. And I've kind of been able to identify it. So off the back of that, I then got in touch with uh, a number of psychologists, and things like that, uh, looked at counseling, but actually a psychotherapist the right way. And I started a number of sessions. This was only kind of a, well, two years ago, a year and a half ago. Um, so what, back at 18, 19, I think it was. Um, you know, and I was speaking to people throughout in a way and keeping that facade up like we were saying. Uh, and seeing a therapist just, there's something that everyone will go through that does. And it's absolutely not nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely not. But you'll go and the first two or three sessions, you'll think, what a bloody waste of money, 75 quid, I'm not fixed and don't feel better. But it's the fact that you don't realise that it's helping and you don't realise until actually about session seven or eight. And, you know, he started talking about a certain subject. And I said, you know what, I'm, I don't need to necessarily talk about it today. I'm actually feeling a lot better and, and I don't need to talk about this and this. And it's almost like I just exhausted all of that kind of stress and anxiety. And after eight sessions, I felt not cured by any means, because you never, I don't think are, but I definitely felt more at ease, more, more, more sense of equilibrium in a way. And off the back of that then made a even more of a conscious effort. And that's where the nose twitch comes from off the back of it. And so that will still be with me and I can you know, manage it out. There's two ways, either, either psychotherapy specifically for my nose or Botox. So I might sneak into Botox and get the lines done at the same time, but that's a different story. <laughs> So that, that's kind of a lot of, of a lot of what it was. And so now trying to deal with it here, I have then spoken to a psychotherapist since and, and try to keep touch and, and then we part ways for a while and then we'll come back when things get quite kind of tight, dare I say, and that's the feeling, things just tighten up around you a bit. Outside of that, been really proactive with trying to speak to others and that's, that's I, I get, I suppose it's, it's like a lot of things. The way I learn is very physical. It's very much in person. The way I, I suppose, talk to people and I, I deal with my stress is, is people. Everyone has their own ways of, of dispelling stress or, or getting rid of it. Some will be exercise. Some will be a walk and a talk. Some people will be, I don't know, you know, a talk with your partner. But it's really important to at least try everything to find which feels the best to dispel what that is for you. And for me, it's it's talking to a lot of people, it's sharing and things like that. Interestingly, though, yeah, I still don't with necessarily my, my closest friendship group. And that's weird. I will now do it on a professional level because I think other people know what that feels like. And it's just, like I say, this vulnerability, this safety um, blanket of sorts that you know those individuals you're speaking to mm -hmm. have felt the same way at one way, shape or form. Um, and like public speaking, you're always worried you're going to get judged. You're always worried that you're going to come off in a negative light. However, actually, most people will feel better themselves for having a chat or, or you venting to them and things like that. And so it's a very long winded answer. But there's a number of ways I've, I suppose I've found out how to deal with it. But it's having reached the very edge that I was only able to. Otherwise, I don't think I would have ever have understood what stress feels like or, or the way in which to perhaps deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. And that is such an amazing story, Max. And I'm sure there'll be so many people that appreciate you sharing that today. And we'll kind of... No one knows that. that. I've never told, I've told only three people about that. So that's, that's me kind of outing and I hope that it does. And like I said, throughout, I was, I was interviewing and still kind of, well, actually, I wasn't interviewing. That's a lie. I was still working, sorry. Uh, and still leading an agency and things like that. And so come so the Friday was a write-off after the weekend I was back on Monday and nothing no one was ever the wiser and I didn't tell anyone at work I didn't tell anyone um 
yeah, didn't, didn't tell it, didn't tell a soul yeah. under the, the premise that actually it's a sign of weakness. And what's the, you know, what's, what's the board or global HQ going to think if one of their team or supposed business leaders is there having a nervous breakdown? Is that because he can't handle the job? Is that because he's weak? Is that because he's scared of something? I don't know. But yeah. in, in a way, actually, I feel bugger bugger whoever if you're gonna think like that you don't necessarily want to be working there or if it's your business and you make anyone think like that yeah you, you don't deserve to run a business so that i think was a really interesting learning and and i've always been a huge advocate of trust quality and collaboration are those kind of three principles i always try and run a business um, with trust being one of the biggest ones that really create a sense of communication and a, and a trust culture within a business. Like I said, I'm the first person to drag anyone out of the business and, and take them for a drink and, and chat to them. If I can, and I tend to try and be really aware of that can't happen during lockdown. And so people have had this real challenge of trying to identify when their teams are suffering and, and how they're suffering, because I think we all have been suffering to an extent. Yeah, absolutely. And it is such an amazing story. And and we we met around about the time that you were talking about. We we talked to each other, hadn't we, on email and stuff. But I think we met for the first time around about that time that you're talking about. And your story is so similar to mine. My breakdown in 2009, my catalyst, the trigger that set me off was someone stole my bag. <laughs> was it? Is yeah. that what happened with me, my exactly bag? Exactly the same. That yeah, is... and I just broke down. It was nothing to do with the bag. It was just everything yeah. that had built up, and it was almost like I exploded. Yeah, just absolutely yeah. exploded, imploded. Everything just went. Ugh. It's like very, very, very similar, very, very similar mm. stories. Bag, everyone, yeah. beware! Keep hold of your bag. It's the catalyst. Watch your bag. <laughs> Watch your bag. Watch your bag. It sure is know where your bag is. Such a fantastic story. So I, I was going before we go into Q and A because we've got quite a lot of questions from the audience. So I was just going to say, from a support perspective, then for business owners and managers, what what is it you think we need? You mentioned about the fact that, that finding, you know, finding out the things that can help you. So this is very personal. So what works for some people won't work for yeah. other people. You've got to find yeah. whether it's exercise or hobbies or interests. Or, what do, what's what's your views on that? What what is it that business managers and stuff yeah. need? So I think treat it as personal development because I know that every owner of a business values CPD as probably number two, you know, after after retaining profits and, and a decent growth for their business. And so changing that mindset to actually workshopping or or speaking to someone as investing in yourself as CPD. And when you change that mindset and they say that you should invest up to a fifth of your salary in personal development, do exactly that. Put it as part of that. And every bit of advice you give for your team, every bit of structure and support you put there, force yourself to do the same. Or even one of your ADs that, that is at senior level, if there is that, that worry of being vulnerable, there is definitely going to be a trust aspect. You need to have that trust anyway. But maybe they hold you accountable, just, just a person. And, and one of the things that I would also suggest in, in a way in which a lot of the bigger companies and, and whether it's in the industry or otherwise, will create almost a buddy system. And it sounds quite silly and things like that. But ultimately, it's about persona building and mapping and you're finding individuals that, that are similar to you and things like that. And you know, then that they're in the same living environments, you know, they're going to be going through the same issue and things like that. Take that same approach and do it at a leadership level have a look on the on the or maybe actually that's for us to create a platform that does that but a safe place where you can there's an idea helen um is that a safe place where you can actually identify that someone with two kids at home runs a business between 10 and 25 people they're going to be feeling very very similar type emotions and things so having a buddy system uh that you can trust or that you use as a, a sounding board or as a is, is really, really important. And it's something I build into a lot of the businesses as part of the culture, this kind of buddy system of sorts, and you almost force it and then it naturally progresses. It, it always is difficult at the beginning, but try and do that at a senior level as well. And it, you call it a mentor, call it whatever you want. Uh, like we're saying, people deal with things in certain ways, but by creating this buddy system, uh, and the hardest thing will be finding it in the first place, but it's something I'm sure that we could almost all work towards to try and sort out it really, really helps because you're sharing these experiences and you can share best practices and you can share difficulties or, or challenges that you faced. And, and by doing that, it really, really helps. So there, there's two. Yeah, um, and I think also things like team workshops and things, but take part in it. Don't don't sit to the sides and let the team in. 
no, more often than not, leaders will, will facilitate it, but won't take part in it. And it's the same thing for personal development around, let's say, you know, confidence in the business, let's say, uh, I don't know, negotiation or, or any one of those typical kind of CPD courses. If we're doing something around wellness, you know, first aiding, things like that, get stuck in and put yourself, take take off the hat of leadership, take take off that jacket and, and step in as a, a participant and you will not only find it as a bonding experience with the team but it will also really help you from a personal perspective of, and finding like I say your way of dealing with things because there's not one way for everyone and I think that's the biggest thing same way just just liken it to learning I learn with my hands on a big board yeah. I hate you know small things I hate digital I like big written practical same thing for, for for stress you will need to find your outlook your way of doing things but don't just think because you talk to your partner once a week or twice a week and have a bit of a vent or one of your girlfriends or male friends or whoever that is that that's dealing with it that does a little bit and it's great to talk but it doesn't go far enough no, it doesn't. And I love that you've mentioned that as well, Mac, kind of that turn up. Because of one of the things that we find at Eventwell, we'll put on masterclasses and training courses and guys will send their teams and not come themselves. So mm. it's probably one of the most important. This content is relevant to everybody within an organisation. When we're talking about resilience, when we're talking about stress management, when we're talking about healthy goal setting, that applies to managers and leaders mm. as well. So show up, be with your team. It can be incredibly powerful kind of for the whole team for the benefit of the whole team that your team yeah. sees you with them sees you being real authentic a human <laughs> a human being rather than the person that kind of sits at the top of the tree kind of stuff you know be, be whatever part. whatever they're going through compound it chuck it yeah. in a pressure cooker put that into another pressure cooker because whilst they have that you then have overheads of the business you have you know health and safety and well-being of the team you have the office rent you have pipeline you have client contracts you have so many of these other compounding factors yeah. and i mention it like that but it is compounding factors and you, no one is superhuman and it's not cool it's not something to be proud of that you've not needed help and again, that's something that I think is, is something that I've found. And I've never felt it cool to not be helped. You know, my mum was a trained counsellor and things like that. And, and yeah, it, it, it just is something that never computed because I never recognised what stress felt like. I just thought it was, oh, this is the, the kind of feeling you get when you, you, when you work quite hard or up against deadlines. This is, this is okay because everyone feels it. But I think it's trying to find out what that feeling actually is. And, and it's difficult, but, but that self-awareness of when things are starting to get a little bit, a little bit tight. And, and I say it kind of closing and just, just a bit tight, bit, bit, bit jumpy. Everyone get, uh, yeah, like I said, my nose starts going and, and, you know, I, I just kind of become quite aware. I get short with my wife. Um, I need to exercise then. Otherwise I've become a nasty, not a nasty person, but not, not me, not the friendly fun type person that I am. So yeah. that's yeah. it really. Fabulous. Let's go for some questions. So someone said here, the buddy platform is, is idea is awesome. Um, they've been a mentor and a mentee and also have colleagues at a level who they confide in, but there's a real need for somebody in the same industry who understands us yeah. but with a level of detachment, i.e. not working for the same company. Yeah. So that's that whole mentor mentee relationship. Absolutely. And, and that, that is, and, um, and what we what we describe and, and we did all of our mentoring or boarding over the last week and a half. And there's a big, big piece around it, what a mentor isn't. And a mentor isn't a plaster. They're also not there just to take, you know, I suppose just for you to download on. They're there to help you build and find the strength within you. So a mentor is someone that will definitely help, but they're not someone that's going to be purely mental health. And is, I suppose it's really important to know when actually someone's there to speak to you about your your mental health and again speaking about it like that almost sounds like well i don't need it i'm not i don't need it i'm not at that point it you know mental health i suppose can be just a small bit of anxiety it could be verge of breakdown which you know i've had everything in between so a mentor is great and absolutely will benefit you and absolutely can help with that but do recognize that a mentor isn't a counselor and they're not a psychotherapist and i think it's really important just to kind of be aware of that yeah, very important point that you made there. Absolutely, absolutely. Someone else has said here, yeah, I, feel, I feel having compassion and kindness towards yourself and having acceptance of a bad day is key. 
So that's mm. exactly what we've mentioned, isn't it? Here, getting mm. stressed, frustrated, upset on a bad day just makes it worse. I, and it's I have hard this. To achieve this. Yeah, yeah, I have this really bad habit, and it's something that a terrible manager once drilled into me, and I still have it now as a a fallback. And that was when I was being micromanaged in a sales environment 15 years ago. Was at the end of every day, I'll get a phone call, and the call would literally say, "Max, have you earned the day?" And I would be like, uh, "Okay, right." So at the time, I think my you know my salary divided down per day was worth 230 pounds or whatever it would be, 130 pounds, whatever it was. And he would ask me, have I earned the day? And I had to justify my worth and if I felt that I'd worked hard enough to earn my salary for that day. And now that has stayed with me ever since. And so I will now go to the end of the earth to try and feel like I've earned the day. And it means that you sometimes put an abundance of pressure. Because if you had a a shit day, and especially now self-employed, you don't give yourself structured days. You don't have to take holidays. You just cruise through. Seven months in already, which is just mind blowing, but you just cruise through. And so, that in itself putting pressure on yourself and I'm very, very driven and I will always try and do my best and I'll always go that bit further to, to do whatever I can for, for, for the business or, or to kind of benefit the, the family or, or my career. But it's that, that need to knowledge that maybe you don't have to earn the day. Maybe it's okay to every so often just bugger it off and think, you know what, that's a dud today. I did about 20% of my usual capacity and that, that's okay. What I'm going to do is get an earlier night and tomorrow, maybe I'll smash tomorrow instead. Maybe I'll earn the day then. But you shouldn't think about this earn the day. It's my thing that I don't think is healthy, but it's just the way that I drive myself. But it's not not a healthy one, I don't think. Yeah, Alistair Campbell has got a really good analogy for that because if you talk to him and he talks about his his depression and, and how he's been affected. So look up depression and me talks about it. Sometimes when he's having a bad day, just for him, his minimum standard is to open the curtains if he's having a bad day. And as long as he's done that, he's fine. Because again, high achiever, all that kind of thing. So it's just, I, I have a thing as long as I've made the bed. If I'm having a really bad day, as so long as I've made the bed. That, that's my kind of minimum kind of standard and for me that that's almost like i've achieved something today it's a shit day i'm not feeling great mm, it? mm. so it's, it's a really important really important message to but, share there the, the other message. thing is is allow yourself as a leader to have a shit day and perhaps just say to the yeah. team guys I'm, I'm today i'm just i'm not feeling great and you don't have to tell them it's because you're shitting yourself about the future of the business it could just be you just say you're not feeling too well and turn your phone off because that's the other thing i suppose in the leadership position you're always there to approve things you always need sign off and things like that so you almost feel like you can't have a bad day but i actually think perhaps building in or you know treat it as a sick day in a way imagine you're sick and, and actually if you're running the business where it can't run without you for a day then you know speak to me from a consulting perspective because that's very different that's a structure and a, a management <laughs> style and stuff but yeah, you should be able to step away from business just for a day or even a half day just to go and chill out or allow yourself, not every day for sure, appreciate we've got businesses to run, but, you know, to have that pressure release where you can if you need to, I think just knowing that in itself will will go far and do wonders. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe in that 100% as well. The business, the culture we have at Eventwell is my team. Now, I call it my BP day. I'm having a BP day. So I'm going to be offline. I'll see you tomorrow. And it's absolutely right what you said, Max. If you've got a business that can't do without you for 24 hours so that you can give yourself some rest and recuperation, some new time, then that the, you need to speak to Max, people. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that offline. We'll, we'll, yeah, exactly. chat, we'll, chat, we'll chat differently. <laughs> exactly. Someone's asked if this session has been recorded. It will be, so we'll make it available to everyone online. Somebody else has also said as Ma- as well, Max, and I, great for sharing your story. Absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I absolutely agree with him. Someone else has said such an inspirational story, Max. Thank you. Helps so much to hear how important it is to be your authentic self. Mm. Stop worrying about what other people think and mm. how you're supposed to be. Which is easier what, said than easier said than done. And that story is, yeah. isn't. Yeah, I didn't share it to get brownie points or to show this different side of me. Things is the fact that I had never told anyone, and in a way, was a bit of a self and selfish release, I suppose, because it just was was building, and I felt it was almost something that I was hiding, and felt almost a bit of a a, a phony by kind of going around with my extroverted manners and you know perhaps being overly confident at times and things not cocky confident 
And, you know, it, I suppose it's just to share that, that we all have a story. Everyone has things going on, everyone. And it's just the fact that sometimes we, we don't know them yet it doesn't mean it's not going on. And I think it's, it's a sen- uh, I suppose it, the sentiment is to be sympathetic and just aware that that, that might be the case. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, somebody else has said, my bag with laptop is also causing, caused me to lose my, lose it. Mine was returned the bag. Day later. I mean, Jesus Christ, okay. we need to get one of those, uh, we need to get one of those handcuffs, like the jewellery suitcases. So at least in that way, shape or form that, that we have it. But it's just funny that that bag, well, it's not funny, but the catalyst was the bag. But in that bag was my keys, my wallet, my laptop, my headphones, everything that I would Normally, thank God I have my phone. That's all I'm saying, because that would have really kind of sent me over the edge. But it's that sense of foundations, the things that you, and, and I found this to be the case afterwards, it's the things that tether you to something strong and a foundation, keys to your home and car. These are things that you, 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 you deem as your safe place or things that bring you back, your wallets, your identity. These you, you, you psychologically kind of emulate or not emulate, but sorry, you, you, you link up and associate with, a safe thing is that your wallet has your identity your money and things and when you lose one of those it sometimes makes you feel like that imagine that times 10 that's what the start of a nervous breakdown is just just fyi is that that sense of identity just just disappearing or that sense of safety disappearing times that by 10 or 20 and that's the start of a a nervous breakdown just an fyi if you feel something like that then that's when you can um definitely just call someone quick Absolutely, absolutely. And and someone's put here the NHS offers free help. You don't need to speak to your GP. That's very true. If mm. you check out the Event World website, if you go to eventworld.org under resources, you'll find the link to Every Mind Matters. So Event World does partner with Every Mind Matters. It's NHS approved. It's a tool that you can use. So it'll ask you five or six questions about how you're feeling, how you're sleeping, thoughts, patterns, all of that kind of stuff. And it will give you a personal recommendation for you to use for the next four weeks. So I would say that's definitely a starting point for people to go to please use it it's a fantastic tool one thing to also mention so after the shit hit the fan um i then got made to sit down and and find the right therapist and i called nearly 21 four got back to me four out of 21 these are paid therapists charging anywhere between 75 and 150 pounds an hour four got back to me out of 21 so if you're in a vulnerable place already that is nothing other than disheartening and, and makes it even worse so what i would say is just just again give yourself a bit of a break and, and perhaps seek some support to help get through that if, if you are at that edge and obviously we're talking extremes here but don't feel because they also haven't got back to you that, that, that they don't want to speak to you and things because i really got pissed off with that these are mental health professionals that don't return your calls or email inquiries 21 and i got four responses just blew my mind and and that's the paid psychotherapist route they're incredible and and the profession is brilliant but there are a number of other as well out there uh, to to helen's point nhs is a good one and there's so many others as well that you can speak to i am a massive massive campaigner for calm um and that's the charity that i supported after the friend of mine took his life massive supporter of it so i think we all suffer this and it's not a gender thing we all do men just happen to be that little bit more bravado and that little bit more unlikely to ha- seek a friend's advice or to, to, to share. So I'll put myself out there. If you don't call any one of them, give me a shout and we can have a bitch and moan and nag or whatever that might be. Um, just just reach out and and just, just chat. If yeah. it's nothing more, just have a bitch and moan and a chat. It will be the start and it will help something. Yeah, absolutely. Talking to somebody um, is the most important thing, I would say, and the most powerful thing that you can do for your own mm. well-being. Don't don't bottle it up. There'll always be yeah. someone who will who will listen to you. You'll you'll always have yeah. somebody. Max has offered himself, so you can talk 100%. to talk to see, Max about anything you need. See, see me as that buddy talk. up system. See me as that, and I, I generally yeah. think perhaps we should look into creating that at a senior leadership level of people that that you know, like I say, it tends to work best when you have people in similar scenarios or similar setups, be it business size or family setups and things like that. But it really works. But absolutely, I'm here and 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 always, always believe that conversations are confidential if you are seeking support from someone give them that trust don't immediately think they're going to go and tell because they're a competitor because they're someone that's a challenge of business that they're going to then share it with the team and it's a sign of weakness and actually they're going to jump on your clients because you're about to fold that's not the way it would work believe that people are you know in in this profession give a shit and also that there is that that 
unwritten rule of confidentiality. And I think that in itself, if you believe that, you kind of let yourself share a bit more and you let yourself be a bit more vulnerable because we ultimately all want this industry to come back and we all want this industry to come back with people that are okay and healthy and not hemorrhage people and, and leave a kind of a broken path of people in its wake. So yeah, do speak. And like I said, I'm absolutely here, confidential, bitch and moan or whatever. Definitely. And that's such a powerful statement to leave it on. I think one of the most important things we need to do as an industry is we need to change that culture within our industry. Uh, like Max has openly talked about his mental health today. I mean, so brave and such an inspirational and powerful story, Max. So thank you so much about mm -hmm. that. I've been talking about my mental health for five years. None of us have faced any lashback or, or neg negativity or anything from the industry. So, you know, it, it's it's a safe and, and powerful thing to do. And it's, it's so much better for you to be able to know that you can you can talk and open up. Mm. So, Max, amazing, amazing. So inspirational. It's going to help so many people today. I just know that we've got quite a few people. We've got to 40 people with us today. So, so mm. really, really well done. Um, and that's that respect, Mr. Fellows. Thank you. I'm your fellow colleague here. Um, we're going to bring this session to a close now. Now we're going to be taking a break and then Max is going to come back in 10 minutes and he's going to be interviewing um, Kelly Frew, Alan Harlow and Gabby Austin Brown who did our, our sit-down yoga and they're going to be showing their experience of the last 12 months. But I promise I won't be, so, I won't, it won't be about me anymore either. It's all going to be about them, I promise. You've had enough of me already. So I, it gets flipped around, I promise. I just ask the questions and facilitate, but it's going to be a really good conversation. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you in 10 Thanks minutes, so guys. Much, guys. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay.